Hello, good day and welcome back. I'm sorry I've been away. Uh, things got a little bit tight at work and so I spent a lot of time just doing work stuff, but never mind that. I'm back and today we're going to start part one of Kubernetes service. So Kubernetes service is another type of Kubernetes resource. We covered pods, we covered replicas, we covered deployments, and now we're going to look at service. Now, the thing is, in this video, I'm going to show you the problem and then this is going to lay, tell you or give the rationale for why we need service to solve this problem. So before I get started, though, let's get our environment all set up. We're going to write a little bit of code today. And so, but the first thing I want to do is I'm going to run this watch command here in my upper um, left hand um, terminal. I've divided my terminal, my screen into four. For those of you who don't know, I use iTerm, which you can see up in the corner there, iTerm2. Um, but it doesn't matter if you have to create four individual terminals and get them all arranged sort of like this, it might help you. And as you can see right now, I don't have any pods running. I don't even have my Kubernetes cluster running yet. So I'm gonna kick that off. And for me, I'm using K3D. I'm gonna do cluster, create command. I'm gonna create a cluster with one server and three agents. So that's like three nodes. And so then bring up my cluster. And once that's up, my Kubernetes get pod command should tell me that I have zero pods running because at that point I actually have a cluster and so on. Now, remember, if you're not using K3D, K3D, then you're gonna be using like mini Q or something, but I've said in the past two or something videos, at this point, I don't see why you wouldn't wanna try K3D, especially given that um, it should be supported on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Now let's jump over and look at the code. Now I'm going to try to make this video like I've been trying to do with the other ones, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm not going to write the code from scratch because everything that we're going to do and all these files I've created, we've done in excruciating details so many times. So the first thing you want to start with is a go mod file. And in this case, I just simply call my module a server. Now, once you have that, you don't have to worry about anything else in the go mod file because go is going to take care of that for you. What I did was I created this main.go file. So all this is going to be in the uh, repo. You can go check it out or you could just freeze the screen and write the code. But basically all it does is it gets the host name for the machine that's running on or the host it's running on and it registers a handler, right? Slash handler. And it listens on port 8080 of that machine, that host on all network interfaces. And basically if it can't listen, then it log a fatal message and i'm using log rus for that i like log rus and then the other thing um and so what does it do when the handler is called it simply makes a string creates a string with the host name that's running on and the time that's it so it says api server on whichever host called at you know whatever time and then it logs that out so we can see it on the log for the server and it of course returned that same message to the client whoever made this request that's all very simple we've done this tons of time so definitely shouldn't be any difficulty there now since we're talking about kubernetes and we need to build our application and put it in a container that's why we need a docker file and so that's pretty straightforward too i shown this before we use from golang which is a an image that has the Go compiler and everything that's provided by the Go community. And we say as builder, I copy all my files into it, which is the current directory, into a path into that container when it's created called source. So I'm going to say go tidy, which is going to download everything. I can actually say go download and you know go mod verify. So all uh, those two would do essentially the same thing, which is download everything, all the packages that I need and verify that everything is good. And then I can build my application with Verbos. And then I'm going to say, I would call it app. So it's going to create an app executable in this directory slash source. So then I say from Ubuntu, 
Well, normally I would use Alpine Linux because it's really small and we don't need all the bloat that come with Ubuntu. But right now there could seem to be an issue with the Alpine. Um, well, maybe we would go probably that out. there's something it's using that's not an Alpine, so that's going to cause you an headache. So just go with Ubuntu. So the end of this, this first container is going to be discarded. And the new container that we're actually going to use in Kubernetes is just going to be this Ubuntu container with our app in it and not our source code. That's why I didn't hear when I did copy everything into that container because it's not going to be there at runtime. And then I want to say I want to expose port 8080, which makes sense because my application listens on port 8080. And if I want to be able to access it externally outside of that container, I should expose that port. And then I just say entry point and basically start that app. Okay, so that's our Docker file. So now let's go ahead and build it. So I say Docker and I say build, and then I'll do tag it as Triversity using Kubernetes, a server, and then dot means this current directory. And if I run this, it's gonna go through and build the thing, download what it needs to, yada, yada, and that's all good. And so I should end up with a build. It took me about seven seconds. Doesn't matter how long it takes you. That's fine. Once that's done, I need to be able to launch or create pods. Now we know how to do this from the command line, but I am going to create a deployment file. Remember, we said that after learning everything about pods and deployments, that we're going to use deployments because this part here is everything you'd be you need for a pod, and just creating one pod if you need to scale it, problems, right? So we'll use a deployment to take care of scaling our pod. And so right now I have this deployment and it, the replica is one. And again, everything we know. But before I can create pods with my container, I need to import that image, remember that. So for K3D, that's gonna be image import, and I wanna import this image that I've tagged, I've just built and tagged in Docker. So I'm going to do that. Otherwise, if I try to create a deployment, it's going to be in this crash loop where it's trying to pull that image and it cannot get the image. So we've done all this. There's no point in showing you that. So now that's all up and running. I'm going to do kubectl, apply, and this service deployment. And you'll see that how it should get our pod up and that is running and look like it's running successfully. Now, one of the things I want to do is I can now tail this container, right? This pod actually, so the pod, I want to tail the pod. There's, there are many containers in there, but then, well, it could be, but there's only one right there, as you can see from right there. Okay. So I'm going to do kubectl logs minus f follow, and then um, I want to give this pod name, and then no, I don't want any correction, oh, man. Uh, kubectl, oh, yes. It needed to create something, so yes, correct that. And if I do this, and it's list, it's not returning because it's following or tailing that container that's running in that pod. So when you say tail a pod, if there are multiple containers, just randomly select one unless you tell it which one. But in this case, I didn't tell it which one. So what I can do is I can use Perl command and I can say localhost 8080. And if I do that, um, you know, it's going to fail. And that's because I have no connection to that pod from my laptop, right? And so what I need to do is do a port mapping. Now, if you remember when we run Docker, we will map the port that's exposed by the container onto our machine using minus P, right? So Kubernetes CTL, we use something different. So we run the port forward command, and we want to port forward from a pod, and the pod's name is this and we paste that there and we want to port forward to 8080 on our local machine from 8080 in that container okay and it looks somewhat similar to how you do it in kubec with docker and so if i run this now you will see it i would say i'm port forward and from you know this to this right which is within that container the local machine the local host of that container to here on our machine and I did another one for IP version 6, but that doesn't matter to us. And so if I try this again, where I go curl and I do localhost, now you can see 
that API server running on this host because that's the host name within that content um, pod. And so yeah, there you go. It shows that I uh, think remember a pod acts like acts like a local host, right? And it has its own IP address and what's not. But the important thing here is the host name. And I could see my message, and not only do I see my message return to me, but I see it all is being logged here. Okay, so I could run this again. I see it. Okay, so that's great and all that. But what is the problem then? That I would forward to. Well, let's just now let's just go and increase the number of pods that we have. And so I'll do this and I'll do kubectl apply and apply that same deployment. And now we have three pods running. And so because I want to let's say scale up and serve more connections, that's why I increase the number of pods that I have. So what happens now when I do curl command so if i do curl remember you don't have to use curl you can use your web browser so if i go to my web browser and i say localhost colon 8080 and i enter i'll get the same exact same thing and you can see that every time i refresh um not only am i getting the met the log messages in the back is um here but i'm also my U ui is updating the browser and you can see we're still talking to this container that ends in DVX, okay? And DVX is the first container we can see has been up the longest uh, pod, sorry, same container, the first pod has been up the longest, but not only that, that's the one we port map to. So if I wanted to reach another pod, I have to be explicit about which one I'm port forwarding to. I'll have to go and say, let's port forward to another pod and I have to tell it which pod I need to port forward to and so okay great I can port forward there and maybe let's clean up our screen over here um, let's clean up our screen here I don't want anything there and then let's clean up here and then let's do a curl again again you can use your browser and yeah I am going to that new pod you can see here the output I am going to that new pod the reason you don't see anything on the log, remember we're tailing a very specific um, pod. We're tailing this pod, not this one. So that's why we're not seeing anything. But we know it's working because we can see the output. And similarly, if I go back here and refresh, notice keep an eye on the host name here, it's gonna change. So if I refresh, yeah, you can see we're hitting a different pod. So then what is really the problem? Well, besides the annoyance I have to say which pod I wanna port forward to, if I'm using um, deployments to manage how many containers I have, maybe I'm scaling up and down. And so this means that our pods are going to be deleted and be recreated. Maybe a pod might crash or something. And when it's recreated, it's going to have a different name. So let's simulate that with, you know, a cube CTL apply. And if I do that, we'll see it all. Now our pods were removed and now we're back to the one we had before. But notice I'm still port map to port forward and that one that no longer exists. So if I try to hit it now with the curl command, it's going to fail. And it should because it doesn't exist anymore. So that is the problem. The problem is that in this world where pods can go and come, A because they created and scaled down, you know, um, or they crash or anything, we need a way to say how can we still be able to send traffic or get traffic from those pods, regardless of if the IP address change or if they went to a different machine and all this other stuff. And so that is what a service is gonna allow us to do. It's gonna allow us to have a virtual or a service IP address that we can just always port forward to or connect to. And the service then keep track of where the pods are running and draw the traffic there. So again, I want to keep this nice and short and so this is the problem we're trying to solve so i'll end it here hopefully you enjoy this material if you did you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing so you can see more material like this if you like what you saw for those who have already subscribed and returned it thank you so much appreciate your time and always your patience and see you in the next video stay safe bye